Hi, this is Eric Sloof and I'm at the Solutions Exchange. In fact, I'm at the VMware booth and I'm accompanied by Jim Silvera. Hi Jim, how are you? Good, how are you? Jim is the specialist on vCenter operations. vCenter operations on its own uh, is able to monitor a vSphere environment, but if your environment is bigger and you have other vendors in your environment, you can use adapters to uh, get the information from those vendors. Can you explain a little bit how those adapters work? Yeah, absolutely, and, and it's a great point because we really focus on vCenter operations, monitoring the vSphere environment and the virtual environment, and then as well as capacity and performance management. So that can extend very well into managing other environments as well, and we actually have a demonstration right here uh, on the board showing VC ops. And we've put many adapters into this environment, and adapters is really how we collect that data. And we have things like EMC, 3PAR, Dell Compellent, uh, SAP, uh, SCOM, Hyperic. So there's a whole series of adapters. And in the past, we really haven't done a very good job of demonstrating this and showing these third-party integrations. So, so there's even an adapter for SCOM? Yes, there is an adapter for SCOM. Um, a lot of times what we'll do is we'll use Hyperic instead of SCOM because it's a VMware product, so it works very well. Um, but we've actually put a demonstration together that actually takes all these adapters and puts them into a single, a single demonstration that we really haven't had in the past. It's always been a discussion versus a demonstration. And an adapter is uh, some sort of a plug-in and it enables you to let vCenter operations communicate with those third-party products, and a third-party product is also able to generate an alarm or create values within vCenter operations. Yeah, it's a gr really great point, right? Adapters, what are they? So they're just a way for us to take other monitoring tools and use analytics that VC Ops has within it very well and consume those metrics and then do correlation, right? People refer to single pane of glass when they want to do performance management. It's not always a single pane of glass, but it's a window on my world. I have a single window instead of multiple windows and I have individual panes that I can navigate through through that one tool. Instead of having to go to 10 different tools and no correlation and no validation of where my problem is, this gives me that correlation to be able to solve problems quickly and easily. So you got a demo of the EMC adapter. Can you show us a little bit more and explain what you're showing? Yeah, absolutely. So I have a dashboard up here, and this dashboard is demonstrating uh, one of those panes of glass, which is looking at the EMC adapter, for example. So we can see across here that we have some issues within the EMC, and, and for example, those show up as red and as uh, different colors to draw attention to them. So as I start to see that I'm starting to have some health problems, I can then go to another pane of glass to start to drill into that. And for example, I can see here that LUN9 is starting to suffer. And looking at LUN9, I have the ability to look at some of the performance information on it. So I can start actually choosing some of these metrics that are in yellow here and clicking on them to populate them to the metric graph. And I can start to see how things are changing and they're exceeding what is the normal range of where they should be. So I can see this for like writes and queue length and other items. But then also from the analytics of VC Ops, I'm starting to actually see that you know my health is actually starting to decline from those analytics, as well as the workload is starting to increase. And that's all happening at the same time. That whole correlation discussion I was just mentioning to you, what's happening at the point in time when it's happening. So when a virtual machine becomes slow because the latency on the data store is too high, you can first go to the data store of VSware and correlate that information to the underlying physical disks and you learn information from those physical dips through the adapter of the EMC. Yeah, absolutely, right? So I get that correlation. So it's the data store, but what's this data store impacting, right? So one of the things that I may want to look at here is actually go into the vSphere and, and we have some built-in dashboards and data store performance. And we know that that LUN9 was actually associated from that previous screen, which I didn't show very quickly, but to this management VCA2 resource. And I can start to see, is there any one resource by clicking on it that's actually causing that high utilization? And yeah, there's something that stands out here. It's the SQL Analytics uh, VM right here. So what's going on with him? And I can actually start drilling into him in great detail by clicking on his detail here. And what I'm starting to look at, is this new? 
or is this something that's been going on for a while, right? This VM we can see has that higher write rate on that LUN, it's causing the performance issue. We can see disk IO is very high here. But we can also start to see some of those metrics for disk IO right here and we see that it was actually within this normal range and then it spiked and that was just all very, very recent. So starting to get that detail, right? But so, so the dynamic thresholds are, are generated by learning the normal behavior of the I.O. you just presented, and once the dynamic threshold is exceeded, the alarm is raised? Yeah, that's very accurate, right? And that's a really good point on the, the normal band, which is represented by these gray bars here, and that's automatically learned by the tool. And part of that issue is, is older tools use threshold-based alerting, right? So I get to a threshold and I, get, and I alarm you, but thresholds are, are very, difficult to use because they could be a noise point where I just have noise and noise is exceeding that threshold causing undue alarms that are not accurate. So by using analytics I get a lot more detail and that's really a key point of why we want to consume metrics from those other tools. We make them more valuable. Can you show the root cause of this problem? Yeah, absolutely. So we can actually drill in further. I can look at all metrics here. And at looking all metrics, what I really want to do is I want to understand what does that SQL analytics really relate to, right? So it's actually getting to how do I solve the problem itself. One of the, one of the things is I could just go say, let's turn it off. Well, that may not be the wisest thing to do, right? So how, what is this related to and what does it impact? So by going into the all metrics here, I actually get a visibility map that actually shows me that this is related to a marketing app, it's, report, it's related to a reporting app, and by looking at these apps, I know that they're owned by marketing. So let's focus on one of these apps and I can actually go to it. So these applications are just relationships, and in looking at the application, I can see that application is associated to APJ, right? And looking at my watch, I can see that APJ is not actually doing any business right now. It's not within business hours. So what's going on? I may not very well have the answers, but what I do also know is who's the owner of that application. It's Ben. So maybe we should give Ben a call and have Ben start to look at his application. Maybe there's some sort of errant batch job that's running and it's running after hours and it's causing this performance issue. I don't necessarily know, but it leads me to be able to get to the root cause quickly and easily and identify who that person is, who needs to look at it, the fact that there's something going on with that specific entity and resource that I need to focus on. So it doesn't always get me to the smoking gun, but it gets me close enough that I can smell the smoke and actually go after it, right? right. Great, great demo, many thanks. All right, thank you very much.